first service and I kind of spoke, I said, I said, uh, God might speak today, but I corrected it and I said, God will speak today. God will show up. God is already here. God's already ready to do something incredible in your life, but it's all contingent on us. It all rests on us and what our response is to him. He wants to say something to you already. 
He already wants to move upon your life. He always wants to do something incredible. But we are the ones that have to be open to it. So can we just pray, Father God, right here, right now, open us up. We're here. <laughs> the hard part's over. We got out of bed. We got dressed. We made it here. So God, right now, in this moment in time, settle our spirits, settle our hearts, and reassure us once again that, God, you're always with us, that you're the one that walks through the hardest and darkest of times, that you're the one that sees the hurt, you see the pain, you know, you know the deepest parts of our lives. God, how we pray that right here in the moment in time, that God, you would speak, you would move. God, you touch our hearts. Just say that. Say, touch my heart today, God. Here I am. Here I am. Come be with me. Come and speak as only you can speak, God, in our lives today. Let it be a word that challenges and changes us. Listen to this song that speaks about our God and how faithful he is. Oh, 
Father God, this morning, that's a truth that we can hold on to. That's a truth that through your word, it says that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. That you're always there in the darkest and the hardest of times. That God, whether we feel like you're with us or not, if we trust you, God, you are there. You're there when the bills are paid. You're there when there's lack to pay the bills. You're there when we're healthy. And you're there when we're sick. You're there, God. You're there whenever the relationships are, are going great or when they're falling apart. You're there when the job is, is not all it's cracked up to be. And you're there when it's the best job ever. You're there, God, because we are never, ever alone. You truly amaze us because, God, so many times in the human heart, we're conditional. We stay by people conditionally, but God, no matter the condition, no matter the situation, you're always with us. You're a faithful God, able to move upon hearts and touch lives as only you can. We thank you for that. This morning, you may have walked in this place and maybe you're going through a discouraging time. You may be in here today and you're facing an obstacle or a circumstance that just seems too great. I'm here to tell you there is a God who is never going to leave you. He's a God who can heal, restore, can bring hope to the hopeless of situations. And maybe today you're feeling a bit discouraged or maybe today you're facing something that just seems too great. We're going to continue to worship. And as we do, we're going to have individuals down front. If you need prayer today, just step out from where you're at. Just ask God to, to give you strength to do that. And as you come forward, we believe in the power of prayer. And the power of prayer says this, where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is also. And if you need something today from God, no matter what it is, you don't have to tell them how they say, you know, could you pray for me? They're going to believe God on your behalf because you're not alone today. And there's a God who wants to rescue you. There's a God who sees your pain. There's a God who knows your struggles. And he is right there with you every step of the way. He'll walk with you through the hardest of times. So as we continue to worship today, step out from where you're at, come down and find and discover you're not alone. Sing it with me this morning.
before you because you're our only source. You're the only one that can rescue us. You're the only one that can look down into our hopeless situations and bring us hope. You're the only one that can heal. You're the only one that restores. You're the only one, God. You're the only one. So God, I pray today over every heart that's here that, God, we would be open and responsive to you. That we would restore, God, our faith in you. That you are our rescue. You are our hope. You are our strength. If you need prayer, but you maybe need to come forward today, but maybe you're going through a hard time, just lift your hands right there where you're at. Just say, God, here I am. I need your rescue. I need your hope. I need your peace. talking about faith works, and we've been learning about the marks of a mature Christian. Uh, remember, James is a book that's written to Jewish Christians, teaching them how to live out their faith. Uh, it's for us to challenge us on how to live out our faith. I hope you're learning something. Um, I know for me, uh, it's been a, quite a journey. It seems like every week I get a message done, I go, "Woo! I got that one done. Now I can move on to something easy. And the next verses roll around, and it isn't getting any easier. James is such a practical Bible basics, how to live as a Christian. And, and it touches every single one of us. It's amazing to me. I constantly am amazed by a book that is so old, but so relevant for today. It truly speaks of the power of God. It truly speaks that God transcends time. That God knows humans. <laughs> God created us, therefore he knows us, and therefore he can speak into our lives. And so we've learned the first week on the marks of a mature Christian. What are some of the five, and I gave you five marks of a mature person. We talked about how to profit from your problem. We talked about how to treat people right, how to make up your mind, um, how to stay positive into peer, uh, very negative situations. We learned how to, uh, last week, how to have real faith. Lots of different lessons on the how-to. Um, and so remember who James was. What was he? He was the half-brother of who? Jesus. And therefore, he had incredible things to tell because he saw some things that you and I don't even see. He saw Jesus behind closed doors. He walked with him and talked with him. He woke up in the same home as him. And so it's incredible that he had some positive things to say, or very many positive things to say about this Messiah, this Jesus. And uh, so we're learning all that. And remember that he gave three things. He talked about live consistent lives, live without fear, and persevere. Let's say that together. Be consistent, live without fear, and persevere. Those are the three things that James is really challenging us as Christ followers to do. So today, as I was preparing this week for the message, I was all excited. I got last week, talked about how to have real faith, and I felt like that was a home run uh, for me. 
don't worry about you. I had a home run, and that's all that matters. Um, felt good about it coming out, and I was like, oh, that's good. That was good. And I get in a day, and, I, and I'm thinking, all right, ready to go. And then I start reading. I start reading James chapter 3. It starts just like beating me up. It's crazy what James is going to say. Now, remember, I want you to, to realize that in James chapter 1, he is touching base about certain things in James chapter 1, and then he, he goes back into them, and that's what's happened today. He talked about this in James 1, and then he comes back and says, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to revisit a subject. And this subject I'm going to talk about is going to really challenge you in your faith. It's going to challenge you in what you do. Today I want to talk about how to manage your mouth. Now, I don't need this message. This is all for you guys. So I really suffered through to try to prepare something powerful for you guys because it's a stretch. It's a stretch. This message is one of those that as I went through it this past week, I went, oh, no, Holy Spirit, don't make me say that. Come on now. So when I preach today, I'm preaching to the choir and all of us. Now, just by a show of hands, how many of you guys ever say something that you regret? I'm waiting. Come on, put them up high. Put them up high. Paul, get your hand up in the air really high. I'll call you out, sucker. <laughs> We, all of us, have said things that we shouldn't have said. All of us say things, and when it gets out there, we want to go fishing to reel it back in. I mean, think about it. In a heated discussion, you let your mouth overload your brain, and all of a sudden, it's out there, right? Husbands, wives, hello? You know, it's, 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 it's why whenever we see newlyweds, and they're all lovey-dovey, and they're all, oh, he's so perfect, oh, she's so perfect. We're like, just wait, the first fight's coming, right? Not to be negative, but just be truthful, things are going to be set. Do you realize that in your life today, you'll have 30 different conversations, and with social media, I think that number is far exceeding that. It's not really a conversation, it's more opinions and, you know, likes and emoticons and all that stuff, but you have conversations, 30 conversations, one-fifth of your life will be spent with talking, using your mouth, uh, com conversing. Uh, it's, it's, it's believed that over a course of one year, you say enough to fill up 66 books, 800 pages each. Some of you can double that times two. Uh, it's been researched to say that the, the females speak, speak more than the men, the males. In fact, studies say that, that women speak 20,000 words a day, while the men speak 7,000 words a day. Now, I find this to be pretty true, pretty accurate. Does my wife speak three times more than I do? Yes. Are you kidding me? Yes. <laughs> so, we, we, we are learning that, that, that we use a lot of words. It's like the, the, the husband that was asked, do you resent your wife because she gets the last word in? And he said, I'm just glad she does and shuts up. <laughs> or the, the, guy, the, the woman that had a jaw problem, she went in for an x-ray. And the husband said, was it a motion picture? Ah, yes, zingers left and right. We all have a problem with our mouth overloading. People are born, some people are born with silver spoons in their mouth, not all of us, but all of us are born with silver feet in our mouth. We all say things that we shouldn't say, right? Like the stalker one day was stocking the produce, young man, and an older lady came up with a head of lettuce and said, excuse me, son. Can I buy just half of this head of lettuce? And the stalker boy didn't roll his eyes that much at her. And he said, let me check my manager, ma'am. He grabs the head of lettuce and goes to meet his manager. And as, as he's walking, he doesn't realize she's following behind him. So he walks up to his manager and he says, 
some old bag out here wants to buy a half a head of lettuce. And he turns around and sees her and he says, and this wonderful young lady wants to buy the other half. <laughs> Quick on his feet. We all have said things that we shouldn't say. And that's what James is going to talk about today. Stand your feet as we read how to manage our mouth. Let's read our Bible prayer today. It says it this. It says, I hold the hope of the world, the blueprint for life. I will read it, study it, and share it. God, help me to understand it, apply it, and live it in Jesus' name. Verse 2 of James chapter 3 says it this way. It says, read it along with me. We all stumble in many ways. Let's say that again. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what they say, they are perfect people, able to keep their whole body in check. Father, teach us from your word today how we can be guarding our mouth because, God, it gets us in so many problems. Help us to walk with you and speak like you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. That word perfect in the Greek is translated as healthy or mature. And the fact is, there's not a one of us in this room that are perfect in keeping our whole bodies in check, especially our tongues. Our tongues get us into all kinds of problems. That's why when you go to the doctor, what does he say? He says, if he's getting a checkup, he says, stick your tongue out. And he says, go, ah, because he's looking in your mouth to see what sickness you may have. Our mouths are truly a, a doorway to something greater in our lives. Why do we need to guard our mouth? Why do we need to manage our mouth? I'm going to give you three reasons with six illustrations of why we need to guard our mouths that James talks about in James chapter 3. The first reason is this. Why do we, must we guard our, watch what we say? Uh, the tongue directs where I go. Turn to somebody and say, the tongue directs my life. The tongue will always direct your life. Here's what the verses say says it this way, when we put bits in the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. It says, or take ships for an example, although they are so large, they are driven by strong winds, they are steered by what? A very small rudder, wherever the pilot wants to go. This is the power of direction. Your mouth, your tongue is the steering wheel of your life. How you speak will determine now, tomorrow, 10 years from now, and 30 years from now. The tongue has the power to direct us to good or direct us to bad. The tongue is a powerful tool. It says, consider a horse with a bit in its mouth. How is it that we can control a two to 3,000 pound animal with a 95 pound person? Because we are in control of their mouth. We can direct them where we want them to go. It says, imagine a ship with a small rudder. How is it that we can navigate the waters of the incredible massive ocean with just a small rudder? I yesterday watched the inauguration and the commissioning of the uh, Gerald Ford battleship because it was a slow day around my house and I had nothing else to do. I watched it on the news. Uh, I actually thought it was really great. It's the first, ship, first battleship since 1970 that's been commissioned and built. And it's the largest ship on the ocean today, largest battleship of any other nation. And it was really incredible. Whenever you're watching it, you know, you're looking and you go, yeah, it looks kind of big, but it's not super big. You know, because you can't really tell from a TV how big it really is. And all of a sudden, the part I teared up on, and I did cry at this part, was whenever they, they commissioned and they said, uh, bring this ship to life. And all the sailors, they were standing one way and they turned one way. 
And they started running on the ship, and I started crying. I did, guys. I, 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 it was a, I guess it was a slow day. It was a slow day. I was all by myself. I was very sentimental, okay? Don't, don't judge me for crying. I, but I cried because I was proud of the servicemen and women that serve our country well, man. I'm just so proud of them. They're going out for six months on this ship, a uh, brand new ship. I was very proud, very, felt very patriotic at that moment. And then all of a sudden, you don't realize how big the ship is until you see them standing. They stood on the, the, all the way around the ship on the deck, on the flight deck, and they looked just tiny compared to that ship. And yet, a rudder, a small rudder directs the direction of this massive, massive ship. It shows that, that our tongue has such incredible power to direct and to guide our lives. What are you saying to direct your life? How are you directing your life with your tongue? Are you directing it in a positive way, in a godly way, or are you directing it in a destructive way? Are you directing it in a way that's tearing others down? Think about the, the, a monk that was in a, a trappist, trappistary mon monastery where they couldn't speak. They were limited on how many times they could speak per year. So he joined, this young monk joined, and they said, you get a three-year probation, you only get to speak two words a year. Some of your heads would blow up, right? You can't do two words a second. I mean, you, you barely, you get five or ten in. I mean, th this two words a year. So, so the first year rolls around. He gets to say his two words. He says, he says, bed hard. Another year rolls around and he says, food bad. Last year rolls around of his three-year probation. He says, I quit. And the priest says to him, well, I'm glad you did because all you did was complain. <laughs> but it shows you how are you? Are you a positive person or are you a negative person? Does, you know, he's only got two words a year and every two words that he came out were negative. He could have spoke any other words, but he chose negative. How do you live your life directs your path. How you speak directs your path. You know these people that they just seem to be negative all the time. Don't look at them. Don't, don't elbow them. Don't jab them if you live with them. You know these people. I mean, when these people walk in a room, you want to hide because you know it's not going to be a good conversation because they've already proven their negativism, their cynicism, their criticism about everyone and everything. Man, nothing worse than a person that cannot speak life but directs it with death all the time. How are you when you speak? Is the cup half full all the time? I'm here to tell you what you speak directs your life. Second thing is this. Your tongue can destroy what I have. Your tongue can destroy what you have. Let's read the verses of what James says. He says, likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Considers what the great forest is set on fire by a small spark. Says the tongue also is a fire, a world of evil. I'm going to read that again. <laughs> the tongue is also a fire, a world, say it with me, a world of evil among the parts of the body. Isn't it amazing that James could have picked any part of the body, but Kevin, he chose to pick the tongue. I ain't saying that because Kevin, I'm just saying, isn't that, isn't that interesting? I mean, I could, have, I could think of some other parts of the body that he could choose to say that's evil. But he says, this is it. This is the spark. Goes on to say, it corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals and birds and reptiles and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by men, but no man can tame the tongue. It's a restless evil full of what? Say it with me. Full of? Full of deadly poison. James, come on, man. You're really hitting where it hurts. 
You're, you're, you're saying it like it is. The tongue has the capability to destroy lives. Imagine a beautiful forest. One little spark can burn it down overnight. In fact, in 1983, an Australia forest was burnt down. 600 miles of forest burned down in one night because of one little spark. Careless people with careless words speak death into our lives every day. People who are so frivolous with their tongue, and they say this, I can say what I want to say. I'm my own person. Right? No, you can't, because James is saying, what you say, if it destroys others, you're full of deadly poison. Woo! Woo, I got to take my coat off. I'm preaching today. That's good stuff. Come on. Woo! He's saying, listen, we can tame animals, but we can't tame our tongue. We can speak most beautiful, eloquent words, and yet we tear people down. Here's how it works. Your tongue is a, you realize your tongue causes chain reactions in good and bad ways? It can be good. Your tongue can be good and be good chain reactions, or it can be bad. Here's how it works. Dad has a bad day. Dad comes in. He's had a bad day. What does he do? Yells at son for something. Then he makes son's day bad, and son then goes and yells at sister. Make Sister's Day bad, and Sister gets mad and goes, goes and does something mean to the baby, and the baby gets mad and throws the rattler at the dog. The dog gets mad and goes bites the cat. The cat gets mad and goes and finds one of the baby dolls and tears it apart, rips it up, causing effect on the baby. Wouldn't it have been easier for Dad just to come in and tear the doll up and give it to the baby anyway? Why did it have to go through so many chain reactions to get to that point? Because... The tongue destroys what we have. We're all at fault at this. I, I'm preaching to you. I'm preaching to me. I'm preaching to everybody out there, everybody up here, everybody all over. Listen, this is truth. The tongue destroys our lives. How is it that we can speak such loving words one minute and such hateful words? destructive things the next. Hmm. Why are there verbal arsonists out there? You know what a verbal arsonist is? You know what an arsonist is, right? Starting fires just for the joy of starting fires. A verbal arsonist is one who walks in a room and seems to always want to tear people down. Seems to always wants to find something negative. Can I just, just, just give you a hint? Can I just give you something? If someone's excited about something and someone's pumped up about it, would you just savor the moments? I have a hard time with this because I'm always thinking about, well, what if this happens and what if that happens? Just enjoy the moment. Don't tear them down. Don't be a verbal arsonist. Don't say, well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, they're nice to you now. They're going to stab you in the back later. Don't be a verbal arsonist. The word, the, the saying that says sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me is a lie. We've lied our kids all these years. Sticks and stones do break our bones and words hurt. And the fact is words hurt a lot longer than you'll ever hear from stick and stones. Y'all hearing that? Because we say things that cut deep and we carry around with us pain. How many, how many, how many adults are walking around today with just deep pain? from something that was said to them as a child. Because sticks and stones will break our bones and words hurt deeply. Hmm. It says this, Proverbs 18.20 uh, says, you have to live with the consequence of everything you say. We have to live with what we say. Proverbs 21 verse 23 says, if you stay... If you want to stay out of trouble, be careful what you say. Hmm. James, all kinds of animals can be tamed, but who can tame the tongue? Tongue is a world of evil full of deadly poison. Do you realize the tongue weighs 60 to 70 grams? The tongue is only 60 to 70 grams, and yet it has the power to bring down nations. What power? 
our tongues have. Hmm. So, what does it do? It directs, it destroys, it can destroy. And number three, it displays who I really am. Turn to your neighbor and say, it tells people who I am. <laughs> it tells people who you are. Your tongue tells people who you really are. Here's what the verse says. It says, with the tongue we praise the Lord God our Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come the praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. It says, can both fresh water and salt water uh, flow from the same spring? Can My brothers, can fig trees bear olives? Can grapevines bear figs? Neither can salt spring produce water. James is saying, listen, who you are is a result of what you say. Now, some of you are not going to like this, but this is true. If it ain't in you, it isn't going to come out. Huh? It's like one day at a church meeting. It was a heated church meeting. The pastor was up front with the, some of the elders and some of the parishioners, and it got kind of heated. And all of a sudden, they started jumping up and, and, and talking heatedly with each other. And all of a sudden, a hymnal flew across the room and hit one of, those, one of those deacons, one of those elders in the head, and he started flying off and cussing. So he took and threw it back, and they started hit the parishioner, and they started cussing. Everybody started cussing. The pastor's getting pummeled. He ain't cussing. And at the end, when it all got settled down, they're like, what happened, pastor? Why didn't you cuss? He said, if it ain't in you, the cuss ain't in you, the cuss don't come out. Because what's in you will come out. It displays who we really are. How are you living? How do you live in your workplace speaks more about how you live for two hours on Sunday morning when you come here. Because guess what? You all got your halos on. You all look perfect when you come in here. But I know better than that. Because we're all human. We all struggle with it. If someone was to record 24 hours of your life, what would they say? What would you say? Would you want me to play it up here on this screen for all to see? I wouldn't. Because why? What's in us will come out. Can fresh water come out of salt water? Can, can fig trees bear olives? He's saying, no, no, because why? A fig tree is a fig tree. Fresh water is fresh water. Salt water is salt water. You can't have both. So therefore, we can't have both. Isn't it amazing how we can lift our hands on Sunday morning and sing praises to God, and then when we go home and go to lunch, rip everybody another face. Just rip their face off, right? I almost said something else, but I corrected myself. We, <laughs> we, we, we rip people a new one. You know why? Because, because, well, I praise God, but he says this should not be. You cannot worship God and curse men. You can't praise God and tear his creation down. The tongue directs, the tongue destroys, the tongue displays. But I believe it's something more. It's what's in you. The problem is not our tongue. The problem is our heart. The problem's in our heart. We're, our hearts are hurting, so therefore we hurt other people. Our hearts are lonely, therefore, we, we feel isolated. Our hearts are, 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 are um, insecure, so therefore, we boast in arrogance. It's amazing. It all stems from the hearts. It's what's in us. Jesus said it this way, for out of the overflow of your heart, the mouth speaks. It's from the heart. So how's your heart today? How's your heart today? Is it walking with God? Is it surrender to God? Because what's inside will come out, people. And it'll come out at the most embarrassing times of your life. The times you think you got under control, it will come out. What's in you will come out. Listen, if you have a harsh tongue, a person with a harsh tongue has an angry heart. A person with a negative tongue has a fearful heart. 
A, pet, a person with an overactive tongue has an unsettled heart. A person with a boasting tongue has an insecure heart. A person with a filthy tongue has an impure heart. Now, a person with a critical tongue has a bitter heart. But it can be the same, the opposite. A person with an encouraging tongue has a happy heart. A person with a, with a, with a complimentary tongue has a secure heart. A, a person with, uh, who speaks truthfully has an honest heart. You see, it can go both ways. The tongue has the power to bring life and death. What are you choosing to speak? So what do we do about our heart? Three things I want to give you in closing. Three things. First off is this. First prescription, first solution for how to heal our heart. Get a new heart. <laughs> Just as simple as that. Let's get a new heart. Where do we got to go to do that? We got to get a new heart. Now, understand, I'm saying this in, in kind of tongue in cheek, but uh, Ezekiel said it this way. Rid yourself of all offenses uh, that you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. How do we get a new heart? We admit our old heart is pretty corrupt. We ask God to give us a new heart. Reborn, remade, completely new. None of us want to live with a negative, critical, cynical heart. We all want to be speaking life into others. Second Corinthians says that the old is gone, the new has come. We get a new heart by surrendering our life to God. David said it this way, created me a clean heart, created me a clean heart and renew a steadfast right spirit in me. We all need a new heart. Second thing is this, we ask God to help us every day. Every day we say, God, I cannot do it. God, I'm critical. God, I'm negative. God, I'm pessimistic. God, I, God, I, I need to be more positive. I need, to more, I need to speak life into people. Do people, when I leave the room, miss me when I'm gone? Or do they think, thank God they left and got out of here? You know, how am I leaving the room? Do I leave the room better? Do I leave people better than when I got there? Do whenever people leave my presence, do they feel encouraged by me? Psalm 131, 141, verse 3, it says, Set guard over your mouth, O Lord. I'm sorry. Set guard over my mouth, O Lord. Keep watch on the doors of my lips. Ask God every day, help me, God, to monitor and guard my heart. God, I'm critical. Help me to not be critical today. God, I'm judgmental. Help me recognize the judgmental parts of my life. God, I'm pessimistic. Help me to not be so pessimistic. God, help me to encourage people today. Help me to lift people up. So when they leave, they feel better about who they are. Last one is this, get a new heart. Ask God for help. And number three, think before you speak. James said in James chapter one, James chapter one, verse 19, it says, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and what? Slow to become angry. How easy it is to be quick to speak and quick to to get angry and slow to listen. <laughs> Isn't that real easy? Real easy to get quick to speak, real easy to get quick to angry, but hard to be slow to listen. But James is saying, listen, contrary to whatever you ever, what you've always heard, be slow to speak, uh, quick to, to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Every one of us are challenged with guarding our tongue. Every one of us can, can evaluate our lives and say, yes, I gotta do better there. Or yes, I need to fix that. Or wow, I really need to, I really need to uh, focus on how I, can, how I can love people more kindly with my words. Every one of us falls short of it. Uh, the, the, the scripture just said, scripture just said, all of us have stumbled in this way. We're all on the same page struggling with how we breathe life or how we bring death into lives. So how's your tongue? Better yet, how's your heart? Because from your heart, the mouth speaks. This isn't right in here. If you're not at peace in here, you can't bring peace to others. If this doesn't love yourself, 
can't love others. If, if, if this heart, if this heart is critical on yourself, you're critical to others, you're judgmental to others if you judge yourself. Insecurity, insecurity inside here will always produce insecurity all around you. You'll constantly feel like, like, like you have to tear others down in order to build yourself up. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus always built people up. The woman was caught in adultery and was down on the ground and ready to be stoned. Jesus could have spoke death that day, but he didn't. He said, he who is without sin cast the first stone and they all left. And what did Jesus do? He went, he lifted her up symbolically and physically. He lifted her up and he spoke encouragement to her. He said, go and sin no more. I no longer hold this against you. Some of you today, let's just be real. Let's just get real. Some of you today, your heart is hurting. Some of you are hurting because of your past, because of things that people have said to you. You're carrying around for years a grudge or pain that's really deep. And it's hard for you to even function in life because that pain is still real. And you find yourself actually repeating a cycle that you hated. Yeah, you know, maybe dad or mom or, or maybe a relative or somebody in your life that they hurt you in a very deep way. And, 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 and you, you said at one time, I'll never be that. I'll never be that. And yet you're doing the exact same thing. You know why? The heart. Bring your heart to Christ every day. Ask him to help you not be like that. From the mouth is the overflow of the heart. Some of you today, you need to forgive those people that have hurt you without them ever asking. You need to let it go. You carry around bitterness. You carry around discontentment. You carry around anger and hatred towards certain people. You need to release that to God today because it's only toxifying your heart. Deadly poison inside of here flowing out. Time to let it go. Finally, others of you here today, you're an encouraging person. You're pretty upbeat. You're pretty, you're pretty optimistic. You, you speak life into everyone you come into. Great. But yet there's something inside of you that still needs to be healed, and God wants to heal you right here, right now. Will you bow your heads to me today? Father God, I thank you for all of your goodness. I thank you that you are always with us, that God, you keep us in your hands, that you watch over us, that you guide and direct us. Thank you. Thank you, God, for the book of James. Thank you for the book of James that, that's speaking to us so directly and so powerfully. None of us, God, really want to just stand around and, 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 and evaluate the negative parts of our lives and how we're missing it. But yet, God, James challenges us today. Guard your mouth. Manage your mouth well. But more importantly, look at your heart. Look at your heart and where it's at and the struggle it's going through. So God, I pray that right here, right now, you would speak to every life. With head bowed, eyes closed, you're here today. And I spoke about illustrations here just a minute ago about you've been hurt by people in your past. You've been hurt and, and you carry that pain around with you and you, you may even find yourself repeating that cycle. And you need God to help you today to let it go. Others of you here today, you've been hurt by somebody in your life and maybe you're not repeating the cycle of them, but you're carrying around this pain and resentment and bitterness and it's cancer eating away at you and it just sits inside your well, inside your soul, inside your heart. And God today wants to set you free from it. And finally, there's those of you here today that, that you're pretty upbeat, but you just need to be healed from a lifetime of scars. You're here today with your head bowed and eyes closed. You say, that's me. I need God's healing. I need God to, to help me. I need him to heal these places in my life that hurt so deeply. I need him to guide me and direct me. I need, I need, I need, to, I need him to help me forgive. <laughs> forgive these people who did this pain to me. Help me. With your head bowed and eyes closed, just say this prayer between you and him. Say, Father, here I am. 
You see my heart. You know my heart. You see the struggle inside of me, the pain I've carried for years, the hurt, the resentment, the bitterness that just sets inside of me. How I need you, God, to give me a new heart. Help me to forgive. Say that. Help me to forgive those that have hurt me. Help me to, to not take it personal, but God, instead, to release it to you. I need you, God. Every day I need you to be my strength. Help me to, some of you need to say this, help me to not be critical. Help me to not be judgmental. Help me not to be cynical. Help me to, help me to, 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 to see people in the positive light of you, God. Help me. Help me to work within my heart so that from my mouth speaks life. God, that's what we need today. God, help us to speak life where we go, speak life to those around us, to our family, to our extended family, to our church family, to our community, to, to the people when we're walking through stores. Help us to speak life to them. Help us, God, with whenever we're doing the, the checking out at different places or maybe the, 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 the server at the restaurant. That God, maybe they're having a bad day and the service isn't that great or maybe they're not doing their job to the best ability. But God, help us to be life to them. Help us to speak into them. Help us encourage them, God. Because that displays who you are, Jesus. Help us to be like you, Jesus, whenever you stooped down and you lifted the woman up. Let us lift those around us up. Our tongues direct, our tongues can destroy, but our tongues truly display who we really are. So God, I pray, let it be a great display of Jesus in your name. Everybody said, amen, amen.